Psoriatic arthritis is a form of arthritis that affects some people who have psoriasis, a condition that features red patches of skin topped with silvery scales. Most people develop psoriasis first and are later diagnosed with psoriatic arthritis, but the joint problems can sometimes begin before skin patches appear. Now let's discuss the pathophysiology of psoriatic arthritis. Environmental triggers such as infection or trauma can trigger the disease in genetically susceptible individuals. HLA-B and HLA-C genes are the strongest genetic risk factors. The dysregulation of immune response activates the dendritic cells or antigen-presenting cells. Dendritic cells produce cytokines such as interleukin-12 which activates T-helper-1 cells and interleukin-23 which activates T-helper-17. Both of these cells proliferate after activation. T helper 1 activates the macrophages of the synovium by producing TNF alpha and interferon gamma. Macrophage will also produce TNF alpha, interleukin 1, and interleukin 6 to activate the synovial fibroblasts. Synovial fibroblasts can again produce the same cytokines that will again activate further more macrophages. So positive cycle is seen here. The T helper 17 cells can produce interleukin 17 that can activate both macrophages and synovial fibroblasts directly. The activated synovial fibroblasts can produce many proteins such as matrix metalloproteinase and agrikinase rank ligand and MCSF, prostaglandins and nitric oxide. The matrix metalloproteinase and agrikinase can destroy the articular cartilages. The rank ligand and macrophage colony stimulating factor will activate the osteoclast precursor cells which will fuse together to form multinucleated giant cells called osteoclast. An osteoclast causes bone erosion. The prostaglandins can cause pain and the nitric oxide can cause vasodilation to lure in more inflammatory cells in the synovium. Interleukin-17 produced by the T helper 17 cells can cause enthesitis, that is inflammation at the site where the tendon attaches with the bone. This is the overall pathogenesis of the psoriatic arthritis. Now let's talk about the clinical features of psoriatic arthritis. There are five types. First one is asymmetrical inflammatory mono or oligoarthritis. As the name suggests, it is asymmetrical and affects fewer joints. It occurs most characteristically in the hands and feet. Synovitis with tenosynovitis and enthesitis can lead to dactylitis or sausage disease. Next one is symmetrical polyarthritis. It occurs in about 25% of the cases with more than 5 joints involved. There is symmetrical involvement of small and large joints in both upper and lower limbs and its features are somewhat similar to that of rheumatoid arthritis. Next one is distal interphalangeal joint arthritis. It affects distal interphalangeal joints and is associated with psoriatic nail diseases such as pitting of nail where there is small depressions on the surface of the nails. Onycholysis, separation of nail from the nail bed. Subangal hyperkeratosis, there is excessive proliferation of keratinocytes in the nail bed. Another is horizontal raising of nails.
The fourth one is psoriatic spondylitis. This type presents with inflammatory back or neck pain. Any structure in the spine can be involved. Intervertebral disc fusion can be seen. And the last is arthritis mutilans. This is a deforming erosive arthritis targeting fingers and toes. It occurs in 5% of cases of psoriatic arthritis. There is prominent destruction of bone and cartilage. The outer skin appears invaginated and telescoped, sometimes also called as opera glass hand. The finger can be pulled back to its original length. Another typical feature of psoriatic arthritis is pencil and cup deformity of distal interphalangeal joints in the X-ray. The middle phalanx becomes sharpened as pencil and distal phalanx appears widened as a cup. Now briefly about management of psoriatic arthritis. Methotrexate is the drug of first choice and is also effective for skin disease. Therapy with NSAIDs and analgesics may be sufficient to manage mild diseases. Intraarticular glucocorticoid injections can control synovitis or enthesitis. Exercise is recommended, but splints and prolonged rest should be avoided because of the tendency to fibrous and bony ankylosis. DMARDs can also be considered for persistent synovitis unresponsive to conservative treatment.